Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Karen Creighton and this is lovely Stephanie Hunter. Now, today is our first quantum question time. We're gonna be doing this weekly. And so we get lots of questions from various clients and, and people who just randomly ask us questions. So today we're going to answer two. So we've got two questions and then we're also going to do weekly insights about what's happened with us, with us intuitively in the world. And so we just wanted to really show what happens in our quantum world, because it's very exciting, isn't it, Stephanie? Very exciting and ever-changing. You have to be fluid in this world. It's just amazing. Yeah. And that's what we found with, with medicine, with everything else, is you have to move and evolve and natural health has changed hugely in the 35 years I've been lucky enough to be working in it. And it's changing rapidly. So mm -hmm. let's get on with the questions, Stephanie. My question to you from Leo is, why do we have to experience trauma in this lifetime? Not a big one at all, is it? No, not purely at all, isn't it? <laughs> I love it. Okay. Trauma. Well, first of all, I want to paint a picture. Imagine, um, imagine this. You've got a lot of pressure building up. Uh, no, I'm not going to use that picture because it's pretty gross on a Friday morning, so I was going to just grab that picture. <laughs> but when we have an injury, if we, if we have a physical injury and we don't address it quickly and urgently, it can fester and it can build into a situation where it becomes eruptive and permanently scarring. So... I'm going to use that as a picture without giving you the full pimple picture that I was going to, that I was going to paint. I'll leave that to your imagination. <laughs> but trauma, trauma is an amazing, although brutal in some cases, confronting, painful. But it is an amazing tool to help us to break free of the chains that sometimes we put ourselves around ourselves, around ourselves to restrain ourselves. And sometimes have been placed around us to restrain us. So either by self or by other people. Trauma is a way for us to abruptly, abruptly and quite confrontingly be shaken away from that chain scenario. scenario. So let me explain a little bit further. We learn our biggest lessons through our biggest pains. Mm. Yeah, put that into a sentence. When we are monocoddled, and when we are cuddled and when we are there, there, don't worry about things, we are not pushed to our extremes. Mm. When we have traumatic situations happen in our life, we learn so much more about ourselves and who we are and how deep we actually are and how much we are actually capable of. So a traumatic situation, for example, might be um, a completely made up scenario here, by the way, um, house burning down and all your possessions that you have spent a whole lifetime accumulating have gone uh, and with those positions go the emotional connections to them with those positions go the the time and effort and money and investment and your hopes and dreams have all gone but you arise if you allow yourself to we've given the opportunity to either crumble and break under that traumatic experience or we go we feel the pain we experience the pain we invite the pain so that we can open the pain, release it, and move on. So many people in my experience through my clinic and all the time I've been working with, with um, beautiful, beautiful human beings and animals, but mainly with human beings, step into a traumatic situation or fall into a traumatic situation and they stay there. Mm. And there is the damage. Yeah. That is the damage. So there's an old saying, I can't remember who said it first of all, but it's not what happens to you that defines you, it's how you handle it. Yeah. And trauma gives us an opportunity to grow. And it's, it is, I'm, I'm talking deliberately with a low voice here and slowly here because I understand people will be listening to this and we're currently going through trauma. And my heart feels for you, but also I'm so excited for you. Mm. Please understand me when I say this. I don't wish you pain. I wish you gain. I wish you happiness. I wish you growth. And when you go through traumatic experience and understand that you can observe, observe it, but you don't have to absorb it, understand that? You observe the situation, you learn from the situation, but you don't absorb it, you don't become it, you don't allow it to completely consume you, 
when you move through that situation, you are never going to be the same person again. You grow so much, you become more spiritually mature. Yeah, like a phoenix rising from the ashes, isn't it? That's what the visual... Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Everything we do in our life is of choice, and that goes with experience and trauma as well. So it's not that I wish anybody traumatic experience, because it's, it, is, it hurts my heart when your heart hurts. But at the same time, I know, like I know, like I know, that you too can rise from this. And whoever's listening to this video, I'm talking to you. You can rise from this. You don't have to be stuck in this. Yeah, that's so true, isn't it? Because when, and we're talking not just physical trauma, aren't we, Stephanie? We're talking about emotional trauma too, because there's no real difference within the body. The reaction is a very similar thing. So we still have cellular memories of those events if we don't let right. them go. Mm. And the interesting thing here as well is that a traumatic experience, it has been scientifically proven, I think the science report came out of January two years ago, something like that, that a traumatic experience can actually imprint onto the DNA and be passed down to your offspring. Yeah. Now, when that science came out, I went, excuse my French, but I'm, you know, I'm a fat up person. I went, no shit, surely. Really? Seriously? Huh. Like, we've been working on that for eons and from a natural health perspective yeah. because we know like we know like we know to coin a phrase that i use quite often that it's the absolute truth that a traumatic experience that happened to my ancestors during the scottish wars for example was so incredibly encumbersome so incredibly um, complete in their life and they didn't know how to release the trauma but they absorbed the trauma and it became physical with them and then when they reproduced, it came down through the bloodline and people have still carrying that trauma now. There is theories, and Karen, you can back this up with, with um, your intense knowledge, incredible knowledge. There's theories of things such as um, asthma, for example, hmm. a traumatic imprint of a suffocating experience in a previous lifetime. Definitely that. I mean, you know, if you think about it, Stephanie, this is amazing, really, because... You think of the generations, how many thousands and thousands of generations we've had to imprint in our DNA. So our DNA, for example, running from a saber-toothed tiger and then moving through the plague, moving through, oh, you know, the myriad of wars, myriad of, of dramatic and not quite so dramatic events, but can carry on within our whole DNA structure the theory I'm getting told here now is we are here to release that. And that is what this time is about. Absolutely, Karen, absolutely. And that's why we are so blessed. I feel so incredibly blessed and to be working with these gorgeous essences called the quantum essences because we're through the genetic vibrational makeup from our beautiful nature. That's the question I've got for you very shortly, Karen. The, the veils between the worlds are really thin at the moment in this particular time in the history of mankind. And, and history will be written about this in the next 20, 15 years. People are going to look back on these times as being the actual pivotal change of mankind. Yeah. We are living through the changes. We're living through these releases and realizations. And to coin a phrase, um, the disclosures of the crap that we've been forced to believe because we didn't have the education or the access to information because it was retained from us for so many eons of time. Now, the other thing about trauma is that when we absorb it and we hold on to it, we don't have to have the same traumatic experience to experience the same trauma. Now, let me explain it again. When we have an imprint of a, of a, a traumatic experience, like Karen mentioned, um, the plague, getting a common cold down the, down the track, will trigger the body to go into the same fight or flight it had when it went through the plague. Mm. So you don't have yeah, to have the same level of trauma. If somebody imprints trauma upon you or an event imprints trauma upon you, to the extreme where it creates this split in your psyche or it causes a split in your soul structure or it causes such a huge imprint on your emotional state and it's not healed, that at that point you don't have to have the same level of trauma to re-trigger the result you just have to have a suggestion of that trauma and i see it so much through here with my through my, through my clinic from the treatment i do with the right treatment that when people come in to see me they don't know what's causing their back to go into spasm because all they did was pick up a handkerchief off the floor 
Mm. But when I take them past into past experiences, suddenly I remember they had an accident, fell off a horse when they were three years of age, for example. And the intense injury that they gained at that time there hasn't been released. The trauma has been imprinted on them. So the question that people gave that you gave me that Leo's asked is why do we have to experience these trauma, traumatic experiences? Because we need to grow. Yeah. We need to grow. We need to understand just how powerful we are, how much we actually have in this amazing vessel of ours, mind, body, and soul. What are we capable of? And how can we ever know the full extreme of our capability if we don't push ourselves to the boundary? A marathon runner doesn't know that he can run a marathon until he's trained and 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 trained. And then he wins a marathon. Yeah, and let's face it, when we're releasing trauma when we're working on releasing of all of these ancestral traumas and things we have to do it like a marathon runner incrementally because otherwise otherwise what will happen is our, our body will go into major fight or flight it's like it's like trying to detox too quickly it's like if you try if you take something a herb or homeopathic and your detoxification systems can't function quickly enough to eliminate them, then our body can, over, can react to that and, and the symptoms can be worse than the original, than the original problem, if you see what I mean. So and that is self causes trauma. Yeah, yeah. So we have to be um, mindful of, and allow our bodies to do it nice and gently. And that's what Absolutely. we've always been, as, as practitioners, we've always been about, let's do this gently. Let's do this nice and easy. It doesn't have to be hard, but you have to be easy on self. Absolutely. I very much live by the principle of keep it simple, sweetheart. So the KISS principle. I know it's supposed to be keep it simple, stupid, but I personally don't know any stupid people. No. So I always say to people, keep it simple, sweetheart. Yeah. One bite at a time. Go back to basics. Make sure your basics are covered. And what I mean by basics, I'm talking good nutrition, I'm talking good water, I'm talking good environment, I'm talking happy, positive mental attitude. So go back to basics, make sure your basics are covered. And then from your basics, heal, 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 heal. We are here to experience life. And part of life is growth. And growth is exponentiated by the traumatic experiences that we observe, but don't necessarily have to absorb. Perfect. That's your question, Lenny. Perfectly perfect. So yes, so basically to press that down, trauma is for us to grow. Absolutely. So, and Absolutely. also release. Trauma, I'm to grow, release, to bring it into your mind, to bring it into Absolutely your lovely. I love it. And I want to remember this about any traumatic experiences you're going through. When we're going through a traumatic experience, and we've all had them, we feel alone. We become separated. We feel the first thing that happens is, I'm not, I'm not good enough. Why has this happened to me? I'm yeah. not worthy. We start to separate ourselves from the unity of our people, of our, of our energy field. Understand this, we are all one. That includes animals, that includes plant bases, that includes human beings. Every mm. living creature on this gorgeous planet, we are all one. So when a traumatic experience happens to one, it resonates to all. Absolutely, yes. So when you're in a state of trauma or you're going through trauma, the very last thing you should do is retreat. Yes. Because we understand, we feel your traumatic experience. We're able to help you to observe but not absorb it because we're just that little bit, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? We're not in direct contact with the actual energy of the trauma, but we can feel the trauma. So we can, we, we can use our support structure help everybody move through the traumatic experience and to observe it but not absorb it but to learn from it and grow perfect thank you stephanie that was great great, great answer love it in detail wonderful yeah now i've got a really good question for you and this came from julia so julia asks is nature with us or against us whoa <laughs> oh there's a simple simple answer i mean I co-created the quantum essences because I co-create with nature. So I have chats to plants and trees and things. And so I have great conversations with nature. Now you might, may look at this and go, oh my gosh, she's nutty. 
But <laughs> the reality is, is they talk to me and they are 100% of for us. Nature is here to support us just as we are here to support nature. So I think, you know, that's a simple answer to a very complex question. But if you just look around, if you walk through your town, through your village, through your city, you will find weeds, um, various different plants that can actually really support you. You know, day-to-day -day foods can be used to support you. It's here in abundance to help uh -huh. us really thrive. And that's where sort of natural medicine is going really is with energies of plants. And we don't have to literally have those plants anymore. We can actually use the vibration, the energy because our frequencies are rising. So therefore the energy medicine is really starting to take a hold and be really, really, really effective on our bodies and help us it. with every single aspect. And yes, n human beings have done a lot of things that, you know, we don't, un as, as a day-to-day -day person, I don't understand the cutting down of loads of trees. I don't understand the degradation of nature, but nature will always come back. Always. Love it, love it. We're well, um, talking about the rising of vibrations and so forth, and that's absolutely true. But I also feel that we have a vibrational connection starting to happen again. We've been disconnected. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's not. I feel the last hundred years have really caused this massive disconnection, and for intuitively for the last few weeks, nineteen nineteen just keeps coming through. Really, really powerful. Really, really powerful. Really, really powerful. So when I look at 1919 and you see what's happened in 1919, I'm not going to get political here, but when you see what was happening in 1919 and there was a massive force of whatever, call it evil, call it, call it misconceptions, call it you know, misdirections, what are we going to call it? But there was a massive force that from multiple directions was causing a fraction friction and a break between the vibrations where we were working one with nature for so many hundreds of years. Yeah, thousands, yeah. Mm, absolutely. Thousands of years. And then oh. suddenly all these these events were happening and these laws were being passed and these these um criminalizations were being put upon people and situations were changing and the invention of the car and things that were causing the assaults there was such an assault of time in the last hundred years, and you're talking about wars, we're talking about all sorts of stuff here, that caused a major break in communication between us and all that is on yeah. this planet. And being nature, being all that is. And Absolutely. So I know where you're going with this, Stephanie, because having been a natural health practitioner for many years, I've seen the shift and change, but I've also seen the, um, I've gone back through the history of natural health and and also been working with practitioners who have been prevented from helping cure various diseases. And mm -hmm. so consequently, I'm really, I really feel that the last hundred years, as far as health is concerned, will be looked upon as the dark ages of health mm -hmm. because of the damage that many, many things have caused. So mm -hmm. I believe and we'll talk more about this and on other questions and things is I believe that the medicines that have been created over the last hundreds of years have been so detrimental to us as humans, mainly because it's taken away our power. Mm. Instead of empowering us, it's actually not forced us, but put our power into someone else instead of going, you know, yeah, we've always gone to like the wise woman or the, or the medicine doctor or, or you know, the, the, the herbalist or, or whatever. But that was always just as a, when we needed it as an emergency. But it wasn't day to day because we knew instinctively what to do for ourselves. And I think what, what, what it's done throughout the last hundred years is taken our power away in so many ways. Mm. It's like, we no longer know, a lot of people don't know how to cook properly. 
a lot of people don't know how to um, grow their own food, how to, you know, fill in the blank. We've actually been disempowered, in actual fact, since the Industrial Revolution in many ways. Yeah, this is a whole video on itself. It is, isn't it? I think, I think we've gone through the questions now, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. I think we yeah. could go on forever with this. There's going to be some interesting conversations going on here, I tell you. The video is going to be amazing because I, I've got it all bubbling up inside of me of all the different subjects we're going to cover. But yeah, so nature is with us if we allow it to be. Yes. And I think, you know, nature, we aren't part of nature. And if we accept that, because we know how good we feel when we're on the beach or in the woodlands or, or, or just being out in, in fresh air and everything. Nature is with us. Nature loves us. And Absolutely. Unconditionally. And it's like the quantum field, you know, if, if you, like you were saying in your question, Stephanie, about how we're all one. Mm. It's not just humans that are all one, you know. Mm. It's the plants and the trees and the rocks and the birds and the bees they're all part and parcel of the one i love it perfect perfect well, i think we've answered those two questions really well karen I think you have. <laughs> and the thing is is we weren't going to do it for this long were we we thought we thought they were going to be short sharp little questions and we'd be over but you know we can always um explore and go deeper and i think because personally i love to go into the depth and root causes and so finding root cause and then we can actually make a difference mm, absolutely i love it i love it i love it so any more insights Beautiful. for the week to just finish off with yes yeah, so we're making this recording on march the 6th of 2020 and i'm going to state those dates because i want to make something really clear here from my perspective we have and then, hmm, I'm going to get a little bit political here, Karen. Apologies, but there's no way I can, I can okay. separate this. Okay, that's all good. We have this enforced panic going on around the world at this particular time over a disease called coronavirus, or a, a mutation of a coronavirus bug. So I stated the date because from today forward, things are going to be coming a lot clearer for human beings as a whole. Where we have been led into a state of panic and fear, I predict or I feel within the next six, four and a half to six weeks, people are going to start going, hang on a second. They're going to take a deep breath and they're going to step back and go, hang on a second. This just doesn't compute. It just doesn't compute. Yes, there is a new disease going around with this, this kind of void 19 or whatever it's called. Um, I have seen reports coming out of China that it has actually now been claimed to be a biochemical warfare that went wrong. So how could a bat create that? Or a snake? Or a... Or a yeah, yeah, fill in, fill in the blank. Yeah, fill in the blank. I'm not finger-pointing here. I want to empower people to understand this. Take a deep breath. We've talked about trauma. This is a traumatic experience that we are collectively going through if we want to and we choose to. If we follow that lead collectively around the world, they're putting us into, they, I don't know who they are. Well, I've got my suspicions, but it's too political right here for now. Um, they are collectively putting us in a state of traumatic experience for whatever reasons. But you and I, Karen, and anyone listening to this video, we have 100% control over how we handle this information Absolutely. and how it resonates with us. The figures and the information just don't add up. If you look at it from a real logical black and white perspective, what we're being told just doesn't add up. Yes, I agree there is a disease going around at the moment and there's this new bacteria going around at the moment. And yeah, but bacteria formulates all the time. Doesn't it, Karen? It's, it's a living organism. Viruses, bacteria are all evolving, all changing. And just as a physical note, this virus that everyone's panic about and going into a two and eight about is killed at temperatures over 26 to 28 degrees. So, absolutely. Yeah, we're in New Zealand at the moment. So, we're, yeah. you know, if you look back, 
there's many ways you can I could dissect this for you. We're gonna, we don't know if there to be three hours long, so I'll just keep a track of our ideas here. People have come into my clinic and they've said, oh, you know, there was the Spanish flu in 1919 and then there was the, whatever it was called, in the 1824 period and so forth. It's, it's, you know, they're, they're trying to kill us, trying to kill us and going, hey, take a deep breath and understand this. Spanish flu came through in the Northern Hemisphere in the middle of their winter yep. after a world war after all the traumatic experience they've gone through, so the immune systems are very, very depleted. After the fact they hadn't had much food because their food systems were very, very depleted. Yep. It's a prime time for bacteria to take hold. Yep. It's the fact of the matter is, as a looking at it just purely physically, is raise your temperature, and you can do that. Ginger, chili, garlic, have a sauna. Yeah. Warm water. Hot water. And yeah. Water. And then, yeah, then, water. Then, yeah, then I've seen sign so I've got the got the information on my, my, my Facebook pages. If you drink water that's greater than pH level eight, so you neutral is pH seven point two. Perfect. <laughs> if you can drink alkaline water which is a level of pH level eight or above, so it's an alkalinity, the coronavirus cannot survive. It cannot survive. Let's add to the fact that if you have your blood temperature, if you're sorry, big if your environmental temperature is greater than 26 degrees, it cannot survive. Yeah. Coronavirus cannot survive in vitamin D. It can't survive. A lot of bacteria can't survive with exposure to vitamin D. What do we have copious amounts of here in New Zealand? We have copious amounts of free sunlight. Yep. So be wary of putting on too much sun cream. Get out there for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour a day, depending on your skin tone, okay? And allow the sun to kill this bacteria. Absolutely. Open up, open up your doors and your windows and allow the air to pass through because fresh air is not good for bacteria. It's a virus, but it's the same. The thing yeah. is, is that, yeah, and this sense of panic buying of food around the world, the panic buying of tissues, the panic buying of masks, step, take a breath and go really is this real because this is impacting on not people's health really but everything else availability of food availability of that sort of thing they're, they're trying to create a scarcity mm. there's no such thing and we voluntarily go there if we don't take a breath and step back and look at it logically so please yeah. please Please, please stay in a state of consciousness. Don't go into fear. And the other thing also, of course, is when you're in a state of fear, the adrenal glands, and Karen can talk about the medical side of this, but it actually decreases our ability to fight off the bugs and diseases anyway. Yes. So why not create laughter and humor? Why not get out there and raise your vibration by going for a walk along the beach or you know, do, your, do half an hour exercise or something? But understand this, your, your immune system is suppressed when you're in a state of fear. And one more point of nature is when you walk in woodlands, you know that feel good factor. The reason is, is the trees and the plants are kicking out pheromones that are actually helping your body. Love it, love it. Nature loves us. What a great way to end today's conversation, Karen. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.